want to thank all of you for coming out today. And uh, of course, we're here to remember the past. And uh, some of us, like Dr. Krause and myself, Mr. Blanchard and some others, uh, we and uh, Dr. Willis, we, we remember when some of these buildings were actually here. And I can uh, remember my one of my first economics classes that I ever taught was taught in Old Main on the, on the second floor. And uh, I was practicing up on my students back in those days. But at any rate, this April, this university will be 104 years old. And of course, we celebrated our centennial in uh, 2009. And this, this plaque, we were kind of really uh, perplexed as how we were going to recognize these old buildings, these original buildings that we had. And we didn't really want to go out there and put up tombstones for the buildings. <laughs> and we, that didn't seem quite right. And so we, we kept thinking and thinking and thinking. And then this creative idea came, came along and uh, allowed us to create what we call a historic plaza. And I wanted to kind of run you through those. These, uh, the institution formed in 1909. And then uh, in 1910, they started building buildings. And, uh, 11 and 12, 13 and so forth, and started classes January of 1911. So uh, it starts over here, and you can see, <coughs> these, by the way, these are mule shoes. They're not horseshoes, they're mule shoes. <laughs> and each one of the mule shoes shows a little line that runs to the particular building. And you can see the mule shoes are located, pro to give you a little proximity as how it would look if you were up above looking down at where these buildings would be. And McCrary Hall, right over here, was built in 1913-1914. Holt Hall, right here, was 1910. The dining hall, which is uh, was toward the back behind uh, Old Main to some extent, 1913-14. Old Main, which just stood right on top of Aggie Hill, was built in 1910. And Jackson Hall, where the College of Business uh, had its headquarters, was uh, built in 1910 and then Caraway Hall, 1913 and 1914. So this represents the, the history and the, the life of our, our students, and we don't want to forget it, and the tremendous investment that Magnolia made in going to Little Rock and, and getting the third district agricultural school here to Magnolia, Arkansas. I think they may have fudged a little bit on the amount of money they had to get it, and then came home and raised it. But can you imagine in 1909 raising $35,000 to try to get this institution here, 300 acres of land, absolutely incredible. And so today we recognize that. I think it's a tremendous uh, opportunity to revisit the past. And there's some electronics that goes with this. It's going to be discussed here in just a little bit. And I think you'll be quite impressed. And then visitors who come and read this plaque behind me will be able to hear the actual sounds of what it was like back in 1910. As with every project, there's a list of people to thank that made this possible today. And I first want to start out uh, thanking the Department of Arkansas Heritage and the Arkansas Humanities Council who get graciously gave us a grant to make this possible. Uh, I don't think anybody's here from, from those organizations today, but we thank them very much for this generous gift to make this possible. This project originated as a professional project uh, by John Rankin. Where's John today? That's on. There he is. Okay. Uh, under the under the direction of uh, Dr. Patrick Edgar in our Masters of Public Administration program. Uh, and so I told John earlier, this is great to understand the con go from concept to reality here, and that's a wonderful thing. I want to thank Jasper Lewis and his team and the physical plant for all they did to make this possible. Stephen Oaks is our designer for this. Uh, he did not just the pen work and design, but he physically got down on his hands and knees <laughs> to make this possible today. And thank you so much, Stephen, for that. Ben Johnson was on our uh, original committee from the history department. Patricia Davis uh, and Jody Westfall really made this possible today, this event. I want to thank them. Dr. Rankin for continually encouraging us to, to move forward. We also had an evaluation committee. Once it was finished, they needed to come out and tell us how we did. And the evaluation committee uh, was Molly Burns and Steve Nipper and Mike McNeil. Thank you so much for that. And of course, I want to end by thanking the person who really was the driving force behind this, uh, and that is Dr. James Willis. Uh, he kept us going. Uh, 
and going and going and going. <laughs> and he, he curses just through emails and emails and emails. How's this going? What's happening now? Why is this not done? So, so uh, I want to thank him for that, for being the, the person who really moved us along and kept us going. Uh, so thank you, everybody, for this day and for making this possible. And now I'm going to ask Dr. Phyllis to come up and talk about the larger perspective of the meaning of this, this uh, historic plaza, because it's more than just what you see here. And he'll talk about that. Quite a number of people who participated and worked on this project, and I'm going to talk about some others. So uh, while I may have been a, a kind of a spark plug, I was not uh, central. There were lots of other people who participated. Uh, we gathered to dedicate this plaza, and the plaza itself is dedicated to preserving the memory and sharing the memory of the, of the uh, Arkansas's 1909 experiment with agricultural schools. Uh, as you know, in Act 100, passed in 1909, the Arkansas legislature and Governor George W. Donaghy created four district agricultural schools that were residential schools for students to come and stay. And uh, <clears throat> these were located at, uh, at Jonesboro, Russellville, Monticello, and of course, Magnolia. And <clears throat> this, uh, these schools were at the forefront of a, an educational reform movement that was rather prominent during the first decade of the 20th century and up to the First World War. At that time, urban industrial America was still bounding forward, uh, lots of things going on. But rural America seemed to be falling behind. And uh, there were all sorts of questions and solutions offered. President Theodore Roosevelt in 1907 suggested that agricultural schools should be established in, uh, in rural areas. And his Country Life Commission, which he appointed to look at rural problems, came up with that solution and many others. And so uh, a lot of states responded. And Arkansas was among the foremost uh, among those states that did respond uh, in 1909. In fact, the agricultural schools that Arkansas founded were uh, recognized as among the best of the agricultural schools that were created in that first decade of the 20th century. Um, <clears throat> Arkansas, in fact, responded in such a large way, if you take the gross amount of money that was put into these four schools between 1909 and 1914, in addition to the local contributions, as Dr. Rainey mentioned, uh, people in Columbia County raised uh, about $40,000, and people in Jonesboro, Russell, uh, Monticello did the same. But if you, if you aggregate all the money, Arkansas spent probably as much money or more money than any other state on this kind of, uh, on these kinds of schools. And they built such impressive physical uh, campuses that it was relatively easy when the original purpose for the agricultural school had sort of ended for the campuses to evolve over time into junior colleges, four-year colleges, and universities. And I think it's, uh, there's no question that we would not be standing here, and so SAU would not be here if it had not been for the establishment of an agricultural school. tells this story in several interactive ways. Of course, first are the photos that Dr. Rankin mentioned. These are from a, uh, a workman in New Hampshire who has a business called Pictures in Stone. And these are laser engraved photos uh, in black granite. And uh, they are taken from photographs that I scanned and that Stephen Oakes and Photoshop cleaned up and removed blemishes, uh, and so they are uh, from original uh, photos, and they're very well done. Uh, Old Main, as Dr. Rankin mentioned, was torn down December the 10th, uh, 1975, that's some 37 years ago. And those of us who remember teaching or taking classes in Old Main, and I see quite a number of alumni out here, there's no other word for it, we're getting old. <laughs> <laughs> and, and our memory 
these, you know, are, are the spare, uh, unless they're somehow preserved. And so this plaza is going to tell the story for future generations of students and visitors to Magnolia and SAU long after we've gone. And so the story will not, uh, will not disappear with us. Uh, the plaza has two interactive ways in which visitors to the campus can learn more about the agricultural schools in Arkansas and especially the third district agricultural school. One of those is by telephoning 870-235-5360 and you'll hear about uh, uh, 13 messages if you want to listen to all of them uh, uh, that tell about the buildings, that tell about the four schools. And, uh, Another way is to access a website which has uh, additional photographs and text as well as the audio that you would hear if you just listen to the telephone. Inside you'll see a computer set up and there's also a speaker and you'll hear the audio and if you want to you can look at the web pages uh, out uh, in a warmer place than we are here. As, uh, as Dr. Berry said, from the time that John Rankin did his project for the National Public program until today has been about two years, maybe even two and a half years. So it's been a long journey and lots and lots of people have participated that need to be recognized. Dr. Berry recognized about a number of them and I want to recognize others. The man who's more responsible than anyone else for what you see here physically is Steve Hopes. Uh, both mentally and physically. He, he, within the last 48 hours he's stained with concrete. You know, so. <laughs> Steve Oates. He's the one who knew about the laser and gray photographs. He's the one who cleaned up the photographs, got them to New Hampshire, and they got that done. So uh, Stephen Oates is really the, the, the person who was responsible for this. Uh, but others have contributed. Dale Duke, who's one of the hardest working people on the campus, uh, has been working with me over several years to populate the archives website with lots of photographs and material about the history of SAU and he has created the web pages for the historic campus plaza that can be accessed. And uh, Steve Lamb set up the telephone system. And uh, Mark Trout uh, is, uh, is the narrator. You can hear his voice if you go inside. And it's a, it's a beautiful, uh, very authoritative sound. Uh, you know, when uh, Old Main opened its doors on January 3rd, 1910, excuse me, 1911, it was very cold that day, very cold, a lot colder than today. But mule riders have always been a hearty lot, and since we've now shown our solidarity with the original mule riders by sitting out here in the cold for a while, <laughs> I think it's time to go inside and have some food and fellowship and uh, get warm. So thank you.